In this example, we want to prove that if n squared is a multiple of 5, then n is a multiple of 5. So it's always a good idea to start by writing out our proposition. So here we'll call this our proposition p, n squared is a multiple of 5. Our proposition q is that n is a multiple of 5. And this if then, right, if then, that's a conditional p arrow q. For this one, we would like to prove this by uh, contraposition. So remember the law of contraposition, or the contrapositive, says that P implies Q is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. And so what we're going to prove is not Q implies not P. So let's start, again, before we write the actual proof, let's start by writing out the statement in words. So not Q implies not P. All right, what does it say? It'll say then, if n is not a multiple of 5, so if n is not a multiple of 5, then what should be true about n squared? Well, n squared should also not be a multiple of 5. So n squared is not a multiple of 5 either. And so this is the statement that we're actually going to prove. And by contraposition, by this logical equivalence, we will have actually also proved the given statement, right? Now, before, again, one more step, before we get to the proof, we want to, or we need to, uh, take a look at this. So if we say that n is not a multiple of 5, we need to be able to write this out in some mathematically significant way, right? And so let's, let's think about it. If n is a multiple of 5, then what does this mean? Well, this means there exists some k integer k, all right, such that n is equal to 5 times k. We saw this in a previous video in, in the previous lecture series. So um, there's what it means for n to be a multiple of 5. Now, not um, for n to not be a multiple of 5 means that we could just throw a not equal sign here, but that doesn't really make sense, right? Because this says there exists a k such that n is not equal to 5k. That, that's not right, right? That's not the proper negation. So instead, it turns out that there are, of course, if this is n is a multiple of 5, there are then four ways to represent a number that is not a multiple of 5. And I'm going to write them out in a very special way here. And you guys can pause the video if you need to and think about uh, why this is true. But if n is not a multiple of 5, then here, here's what's true about, so again, there exists a integer k such that now there are four cases here of what the structure of this number n could look like. n could equal to 5k plus 1. And, and just think about it. This is like if, if n is a multiple of 5, then n is equal to 5k plus 0 in some sense, right? There's a 0 remainder. The division works perfectly. So n is equal to 5k plus 1. n is equal to 5k plus 2. And now you think, oh, we just go to 3, go to 4. That's, that's true, right? But it, the same as 3, uh, the same, so uh, instead of going to 3 and to 4, we could write n is equal to 5k minus 2. That's the same as plus 3. Um, it's just with a different k, right? It's with a different k. And the same here for n is equal to 5k minus 1 is the same as 5k plus 4. Again, with a different choice of k. We didn't say what k is, so we can write these uh, this way without any trouble. And the reason that this is a little bit better is because we can now say that, that we can break this down into just two cases instead of four cases. So we can say n is equal to 5k plus or minus 1. That's plus 1 and plus 4 wrapped up into a single term. Or n is equal to 5k plus or minus 2. So that's plus 2 plus 3 wrapped up into a single statement there. All right. And so these are now two cases that we have to consider. So we'll call this maybe case 1 and we can call this other one case 2. These are two cases that we have to consider for ways that n can be not a multiple of 5. It's a weird way to say it, but that's how we should say it here. So n is not a multiple of 5. Then it has one of its fits into one of these two structures. And at this point then we're just going to, for each of these two structures, we are going to then just square them and see what kind of structure comes out of that, right? In terms of being a multiple of 5. So let's write the proof then. We're, I think we're ready to write the proof. We've unpacked the question. We know what's going on. So as always, we start with 
telling our readers that we're writing a proof. And we say, suppose n is not a multiple of 5. Now, at this point, I probably should have said that n is an integer. Um, you know, it's okay. So n is not a multiple of 5. Then we have two cases, right? So we'll say this. Consider the case n is equal to 5k plus or minus 1. So this is our case 1 from just above here. So case 1 from right there, right? Case 1, n is equal to 5k plus or minus 1. In this case, then what is n squared equal? Well, n squared has to be 5k plus or minus 1 quantity squared because that's what k, uh, that's what n equals, 5k plus or minus 1. Um, up here I should have said, so I got a little bit lazy here, I should have said that this is true for some integer k. All right, so you're, you're always free to go back and add stuff into the proof before you submit it, right? So I'm just kind of uh, making an addendum there. So n is equal to, we set it up here, right? But I didn't say it in the proof. You, you cannot, remember, the proof itself is independent of all the scratch work we've done ahead of time. So I, I should have said it in the proof as well. But at this point, we can just do the math. So when we square this out, what do we get? We get 25k squared plus or minus, depending on the sign, but it's not going to really matter. So 10k, and then this term is always going to be plus 1. All right, and now what do we want to do? We want to show that this is also not a multiple of 5. So look what we can do. From these first two terms, we can factor out a 5, right? And we can write this as 5 uh, times. This one's going to be 5k squared, plus or minus, again, doesn't really matter, 2k, uh, and then plus 1. And then at this point, we can say, all right, at this point, let's let's give this a name as well. Let's call this, let's say, m. So where m equals 5k squared plus or minus 2k is an integer. All right, why is it an integer? Well, it is the sum or difference of a product of integers. So the integers are closed under sums, differences, and multiplication, right? Not division, but multiplication. So that means then that this is equal to 5m plus 1, and guess what? That is not divisible by 5 then, right? So in this case, uh, n squared is not a multiple of 5. So we can say this here. So n squared is not a multiple of 5 if uh, n itself is of the form 5k plus or minus 1. All right, but we're not done because we have to check these other two cases. So we have to check the 5k plus or minus 2 as well. All right, so let's do it. Um, now, let's suppose that n is equal to 5k plus or minus 2 for some uh, k, integer k. And then we just repeat the argument. It might come out a little bit different, so let's see what happens. So we can say then, what's going to be true about n squared? n squared is going to this time equal 5k plus or minus 2 quantity squared. This is 25k squared plus or minus, this time we end up with 20k, and then plus 4 at this point, right? And what's going to happen? Well, if we want to get this in the form of one of our two statements that we had before, we can do a little plus one, minus one trick here, all right, and then factor out a five just like we did before. We can get a five from here, from here, and all this, and we end up with uh, five times. This is going to be 5k squared plus or minus 4k plus one, all right, minus one. All right, and then we make the same argument here, or the same observation, that this is going to be, let's again call this m, let's call it m with a hat because it's different than that one. This one is going to be 5k squared plus or minus 4k plus 1. Uh, this is an integer. And so thus, what's true? n squared is equal to 5 times m bar minus 1. And that means n squared is not a multiple of 5. 
Now we've checked all the cases, right? We've checked all the possible cases for the structure of the number n. We've shown that when we square this number n under either of these two cases, which is really four cases wrapped up into one, right? Under any of these circumstances, when we square the number n, we get that n squared is not a multiple of five. All right, and so we can now make our conclusion. So we've shown that if n is not a multiple of five, then n squared is also not a multiple of five. All right, and then by contraposition, what does this mean? This is, remember, the statement that we wanted to prove. We conclude at this point that what? If n squared is a multiple of five, then n itself must be a multiple of five. All right, so that one's a little bit longer than some of the ones we've done so far. The reason, part of the reason for that is that we have a couple of cases, and part of the reason is just we wanted to think it through before we wrote it out. But at this point, we're done with the proof, and as always, we celebrate that fact with a little smiley face.